I'm going to build up the layers of the nose gradually and I start with a very watery mix of black paint. I have marked out the different areas of the nose in my sketch and I make sure to leave the wet shiny parts of the nose unpainted. Dog noses are textured, so along the edges of the shiny areas I apply the paint in dots. This technique is called stippling and I do this to make the outlines of the shiny parts irregular to create texture to the nose. Even though our belly just started to paint, we can already see the nose taking shape, and the shiny areas really make it look like a wet dog nose. On the top part of the nose, I add tiny dots of pale paint to add texture and connect the shiny area with the more in shadow right side of the nose. I continue adding texture in the shiny middle part, applying slightly darker dots where the nose is darker. I make sure to add really pale dots closer to the middle where the sheen is stronger. I apply more dots and details in the other shiny areas as well, to map out their shape and form and to connect them with the darker areas. I also add some lines under the nostrils to create curve. Before I start applying the darker layers, I need to reinforce my drawing. The graphite lines are pale, and with the first layer of pale black paint, they are almost invisible by now. So to be able to see them under the darker layers to come, I apply more concentrated black paint, so I will be able to see my drawing better as I move forward in the painting process. Now it's time to go in with darker paint and I start around the top part of the nose by applying darker dots around the shiny area. This builds up the illusion of texture and at the same time I also refine the shape of the shiny area and create the curved shape of the nose, all with a smooth transition to the area surrounding it. I do the same with the shiny areas below the nostrils. There's two reasons why I don't go in with this darker paint right from the start. The first is that with the first pale layer of paint, I can establish the different shapes and values of the nose without worrying about getting all the details right. And the second reason is that layering creates depth and a three-dimensional look to the painting. Now I apply darker paint in the darker area surrounding the lighter areas. Around the shiny areas I apply the paint irregularly to help reinforce the illusion of texture. I water down my paint a little bit and apply this on the right top part of the nose. This area is not as dark as the other areas. I also apply some of this paint around the shine areas to connect the light and dark areas. I add more dots and soften the area between the nose and the nose bridge by lifting some paint to make it smoother. I go in and darken the nostrils to make them look more three-dimensional. After all, they are big holes that extend into the nose and they appear darker the further in we look. I 
I continue with the bottom part of the nose and apply the dark paint to the darker areas to build up the shape and structure of the nose. Here and there I also add more dots to create texture. I apply more dark dots around the nostrils and the darker areas to create texture transitions between darker and lighter areas. And as a last refinement I add darker dots on the top right of the nose to darken it a bit. The nose is painted with one single color and it is obvious here that it is the values, the combination of dark and light areas that make the nose look like a real wet dog nose. I hope you enjoyed this mini class. For more inspiration and tips about painting realistic animals and wildlife in watercolors and also free tutorials, please visit jessicabolander.com.